Evening everybody, um, it's still Saturday 21st of May, um, number two of the three that I'm going to do tonight because I've got a lot on and I need to crack through this and I'm really really hoping that the battery holds out so I need to shut up and stop yapping. So we've done black yesterday, yesterday, uh, we're going to do white now, Dewar's white label, um, probably one of the one of the maybe top 10 biggest selling names known worldwide. Um, so this um, uh, Dewar's was established by a guy called John Dewar Senior, um, who set up a uh, wines and spirits shop on Perth High Street in 1846 um, and began blending his own whiskies, as a lot of these shops seem to do around the time. It became very popular, particularly in the US. They really took advantage of the US market. Um, in 1891, um, a Andrew Jackson actually ordered a sorry Andrew Carnegie actually ordered a keg for Pres President Benjamin Harrison, um, who then got a bit of stick for not actually um, buying American goods because he was really keen on this uh, on this whiskey. Um, so it's been very highly regarded. Queen Victoria uh, issued it with a royal warrant in 1893. Uh, Tommy Dewar, who was John's son, uh, was actually knighted by uh, King George in 1902. King George the whatever number he was. Um, it was um, was owned by Diageo at one point, but uh, Diageo sold it to Bacardi in 1997, the company. Um, so it's now currently owned by Bacardi. Um, apparently 40 different whiskies are using this. Now whether that's 40 different malts or that includes the grain as well, but a large constituent of this apparently is Aberfeldy. No age statement. Um, you are, it's a 40% this is what the bottle looks like. Um, it's very, very big in, no, sorry, that's the next one. The next one's big in Venezuela. Um, but this is very big in America, particularly. Um, so it's actually quite tricky to find in the UK. Um, if you can find it, you're looking anywhere between 15 to 20 quid, but probably more the 20 quid side, simply because a lot of it is shipped overseas. So the demand is less here and the price is going up a little bit. So we'll crack on. Nice coloring on it. I'm willing to bet there's maybe a colouring added to it. Who can say? You can't. I'm not going to judge it anyway. Now there's a nice maltiness on this. This is a completely different beast to the Indian that we had um, yesterday. Um, there's actually a no yeah, there is a nice maltiness and all a slight rumminess as well. Yeah, there is that kind of like stewed fruit that you get from um, from like a decent not not dark rum but that kind of golden rum. A little bit of spiritiness, but it's not too it's not too intense. Spiritiness seems to be my new word at the moment. It's better than prickle at least. But not a bad that you get that edge from the graininess, but it's not overpowering, it's quite well balanced. Very smooth, very smooth indeed. No burn whatsoever. A gentle smokiness to it as well. Wasn't expecting that. Very, very subtle, very soft, not too obvious. There's a, a rich round mouthfeel to it. Not a huge amount on the palate, and the finish isn't particularly long, but it's very, very well balanced. I can see why this is very, very popular, because it is silky smooth, really just, just slides down. It's rich, it's full. The smokiness is just lifting everything up. It's not too intense, it's not too complicated. There's not bags of flavor in there, but what there is is pleasant, easy drinking, no real thought to drink it, nothing's gonna fight you, nothing you have to work with or battle against. Yeah, I can, I can perfectly understand why this is a very, very popular whiskey, because it's got classical whiskey flavors into it, there's a, there's a bit of caramel in there. There's a, a there's a maltiness to it. There's a very very slight touch of smoke, which is just making things interesting, but not overpowering, not offensive, not challenging. It's good. It's not mind blowing. It's not sort of wow. This is a, a, an amazing blend. It's just a very very good, very solid, very dependable blend. I can't fault it to be honest. I can't rave about it, but I can't fault it. There's nothing wrong with this whatsoever. So yeah, I can fully understand. If you can find it for about the 15 quid mark, I think it's actually pretty good value for money. 20 quid's probably pushing it slightly. Um, but all in all, actually pretty decent. Again, this was another one from Andrew P. Butler, who's here now, um, and he also provided the next one, but I'll mention him then. But yeah, you know what? Jewel's white label, pretty damn good actually. Yeah, can't fault that at all. 
Right, um, that's another quick one off the list, and I need to do another quick rinse out, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.